So we're live. So uh, on this TED Summit Revisited, we've got uh, Dinesh from Senate Mobile. And we're going to be talking about uh, his presentation he gave uh, that uh, really, I, th you know, I think a lot of people were interested in. And uh, one of the sort of uh, feedback I got was the frustration in not being able to ask enough questions. So this is our opportunity. So I'm going to get straight down to it, Dinesh. I'm just going to ask the first question, which is, what is the difference between a traditional SDP and your telco app platform? Right, so uh, what we say you know, a traditional SDP is actually you know, looking at the southbound uh, network assets and then opening those network assets for developers, you know, hardcore developers to come and build applications on top of that. The Senate mobile tap telco application platform not only opens those services and opens as you know apis for developers but we call what we call the northbound innovation layer mm -hmm. which we actually focus on creating non developers to be able to come and create telco services api platforms really i think don't, don't make money i mean we always say it's, it's the services that makes money and how do you create these services? And to create these services, you need to be able to really look at you know, not only the traditional, but also what we call the non-traditional non-developers to be able to come and create services. So that's the main difference between you know, a lot of the API platforms and the Senate Mob uh, you know, TAP platform. Yeah, and I, I, the work we do in TATHACK really confirms what you're saying there, Dinesh. Uh, if we look at, for example, we did a recent uh, TED Summit revisit with Sebastian uh, Schumann from T-Mobile. He's not a developer. And the platforms were just so easy that he was able to create a service, win at uh, TATHACK London, and take that code and use it in for real in T-Mobile where they launched a service within uh, six months. So absolutely, I think we're seeing this happen more and more and more. But you've got to make it as simple as possible. And it's beyond just an API. It's graphical tools, it's simple web forms. So moving on from uh, that, which I think you know, we've got uh, a lot of uh, evidence that backs up your statement there, uh, Dinesh. One of Senate Mobile's differentiators is engaging non-coders. So how do you do that? Right. So that's what actually, if you say, you know, what is our real DNA, you know, for us, the real DNA is actually engaging the non-coders or the, what we call the non-developers. Yeah. But that, what we have actually done is being able to create an ecosystem where they can come on, on board onto the platform and being able to use a series of templates and being able to create uh, you know a telco service out so that itself had really helped those non-developers to bring services out very quickly mm -hmm. and from an operator or from a telco standpoint for them also it's something that they don't need to worry about you know looking yeah. at their internal network because you have actually exposed what needs to be exposed and you're taking them through a more of a control mechanism to be able to create a service and the this real the real turning point in this was you know once you have these developers coming and building applications the the traction that they get on a one app may be different from something else but if you see the amount of time that you spend also it's you, you know the same amount of time so you don't have to build something for weeks and then realize you know the market doesn't like it you know, so you quickly look at it, you put something out, you know, you, you tweak it and you continuously improve it and all of a sudden you have something that is scalable. So that's where the, really the developers started making money. Once they started making money, it became a snowballing effect. And now we, I mean, the growth on the developer community itself, it's about, you know, almost, you know, you know every year we get about 100%, uh, you know, uh, new developers coming into the platform. Yeah, which is great. And uh, just interested, I mean, one of the other areas that I see emerging is in the telco's actual customers using those capabilities. So I'm just interested, uh, you know, in terms of addressing non-coders, you know, I, I, you've mentioned developers who are creating apps, but, you know, are, are you seeing other 
groups getting uh, involved in this? Yes, yes. What we see is, you know, what we call the non-techies, you know, and, yeah. and enterprises. And, gotcha. you know, for them, they think these, you know, what we call the research-based simple app creation, app builders, helps them again to go and create these apps. You know, it could be, you know, a small enterprises before if they went to an operator and say, you know, we want to get, you know, 1,000 SMS per month, you know, they would have shown, shown them, told them, you know, it's not their core business, you know. So yeah. now they can come to a platform like this and, you know, build that application and really kind of, uh, you know, get that scale. So we see a quite a bit of uh, not only uh, individuals, but we see small enterprises and also small communities. And oh. because the other thing here, Alan, that I, we really saw was the communities that were mm -hmm. really being able to engage their communities through these apps. Cool. It could be, you know, your, you know, you know, your, your, you know, uh, you know, local uh, rotary clubs. You know, it could be your different communities that needed to be in touch with people and stuff like that. Because this was giving you a platform for you to be able to connect them together. You can very easily create an app, and you can very easily, uh, easily launch that app with them. And that's a very good point. I think that uh, that definitely is an area we should explore through this year with TATAC is looking at uh, community engagement. So moving on, you've created in Sri Lanka for sure. I mean, the data is there from TATAC when we look at the registrations, the largest, most engaged community for telecom app developers. How did you make that happen? So there, there's no really a magic formula here. It's, it's a lot of uh, hard work working with the working with the operators, you know, hand in hand. You know, I mean, that's where it is. So, so when we when we uh, launch the uh, tap with Dialog, which is branded as uh, Idea Mart, and uh, what what happened was from day one, we were actually working with them to be able to create it and, and help the developers to build it. And uh, I think you, you, you saw at the last Tad Hack, uh, Anthony, who, who, is, who, who was the uh, champion of this uh, platform here at, at his keynote, I think he also mentioned very clearly that you know, the first month nothing happened, the second month nothing happened, and it took, it took you know, four to five months to really get the ball rolling in here you know so and that was you know i have to give a lot of credit to the dialogue uh, idea Mart team where they really you know went out and evangelized this whole thing and you know bring those communities so whether it's uh, uh, meetups hackathons uh, communities you know so we, we had a, a a group that was constantly you know drumming that what need what needed to happen yeah and the 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 tipping point you know, really the, you know, what I call the crossing the chasm happened when they started making, when the developers started making money and that became wider because the, I think the beauty here again was the revenue share, which uh, again, I have to give a lot of credit for, um, you know, Dialogue Idea Mart team because they said, okay, we will share 70% of the revenue with the developers, which was unheard if you really look at, you know, in any, operators, you know, maybe other than maybe Japan or some other places where, you know, the largest sum of the revenues were given to the developers. And that was the, really the tipping point. And, you know, then it started growing over and over. I think the stats, stats are there. The growth of the platform is over 20% month on month growth, both on revenues as well as number of apps that were coming in. So that's the whole thing. That That's one aspect. The second one was yeah. we also had a a developer engagement program which was actually uh, where you needed to really when somebody because we had a you know a developer support person that person was 24 hours in the sense that he would have his mobile and because i am at 11 at midnight doing something and i get stuck i can't wait till tomorrow right you know i, I chat or i would kind of give a quick call and say this is happening what is not so developer engagement was one of the key factors. And if you really look at these things, if you put them in order, and if you are, if, if you are really on this course, I think you, we, we can actually guarantee anywhere in the world, I think this will, you know, it will take off. But that commitment and the persistence to be able to go through is very important. I agree. And that's you know, in part why Cisco bought Tropo, in being able to have that 
dedicated focus to understand to have for example being on irc when at when midnight to 1 a.m you've got a problem with an api it's not working and you've got somebody you can basically respond to you in a few minutes so absolutely i think it's that dedication and i think one of the things i see in many markets is realizing it's about people and building those direct personal relationships so it's evangelists creating evangelists that then propagate that on across the uh, developer community so excellent points yeah so um, add, add to that alan is very interesting now if you really see the community itself is actually supporting the others you know if, if so if there's a if there is yeah. a, some that i i, I run, run into something and you know definitely there are other 10 people who have done that before so if once you post some of these things, whether it's on Facebook or you know, some of the community sites for the for the platform, you'll have yeah. four to five guys responding. You know, which was not there at early stage. Now itself, it's you know, it's like you know your good old days. You know, when we were doing uh, you know hardcore programming, you know, you kind of go on 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 to job, you know, to a uh, support board and you know put that up and you get people. Now that was happening in this whole whole area. You know, which, exactly. Which, great community support from each other yeah and I, I always maintain, you know, maintain there are no new mistakes under the sun somebody's done it before <laughs> so moving on uh, I made this point the money is not in the API's it's in the services in your presentation you made that very clear that uh, you know the business model of uh, API management systems will not bring sustainable revenue. So, just interested if you could elaborate a bit more uh, on the point you made there in your presentation. Right. So, if, if you really look, a lot of the traditional service creators for, for APIs, they actually charge the developers for API calls. Yeah. Right. And you, you have a you have a mechanism, but in a, in an ecosystem like we are in currently. I think it should be it should not be the developers that have been charged. It should be, you know, you know, it, it, it you know you have to have a different model, you know, because you cannot, I mean, you know, it, it's not the consumption of the APIs that actually should be charged. It should be the services or the value addition that comes out of that particular thing is should what what should be charged. So your business models needs needs to change. So I, that's yeah. where I think especially you know, uh, areas where you, if, if you can really look at how do we create some very innovative services and then charge for those services, whether it's subscription based, whether it's, uh, you know, uh, could, could be also, you know, as uh, on demand, you know, you can do multiple business exactly. models in this area rather than just going and, you know, taxing the API number of API calls you did or number of, uh, you know, you know, uh, a database access you had for this particular information and stuff like that so you know we believe in a different model and that's what when we talk with the uh, telcos when we actually now quite a lot of them come and ask you okay you know what do you see that happening in in, in rest of the uh, platforms where we have deployed we always say okay let's look at a model where you actually get the consumers to pay for the value of that service rather than the number of API calls that you just did. Exactly. Uh, absolutely. It has to be driven by customer value. And in some markets, maybe more mature markets, where it's all, I mean, you, know, you can't even charge for an SMS. It's all bundled. So uh, it's, it's a lot harder to do some of the revenue shares. The operator still has a lot of value because they are a channel to market and then working with, particularly on enterprise services, to deliver services for which enterprises are prepared to pay and sharing in the revenue that's created by delivering that value. Again, I think there's a lot of mileage in those type of models for uh, operators in more developed markets. Great. Yes. So moving on. So as always, I, and I, I, I fully agree with what you say, it's an innovation layer. It's helping yeah, all these network capabilities to be consumable by the vast array of different types of people out there uh, and help them uh, create value. So how do you position Senate Mobile compared to the more traditional sort of API management software providers? Right. So we, we, 
for us, I think, you know, like, like I think maybe started, so Senate Mobile API platform or the TAP platform is, you know, it, it's an end-to-end -end platform. It actually goes from your southbound layer, we will open it up, and then we have the, uh, you know, northbound innovation layer. I think yeah. for us, the northbound innovation layer is the real differentiator. So we can, we can actually sit on any API management platform doesn't matter whether it's from any of the uh, API management platforms you can say we say that it's going beyond API so you expose those APIs we can actually sit on top of that which which you call the you know we we call it the MBIL you know not one innovation layer and then we actually from there we actually monetize it so we from for that we have actually the one of the products that we have is more on the messaging and the service creation then we also have the WebRTC, you know, where we actually launched uh, last time for the first time in the world. That the whole WebRTC at at that we we launched that, mm -hmm. which really kind of have a quite a lot of response on the whole WebRTC uh, pattern that we actually launched there. Then we have the enterprise, which is our latest innovation, which is helping enterprises to create downloadable apps. Again, we have. You know, gone beyond your normal uh, tech, uh, techie based app creation into non techies to be able to create enterprise apps. So, so that's what we, we, we call ourselves, you know, our real differentiator is that uh, you know, northbound innovation layer where, where any API management plan, doesn't matter who you have it, you know, we are, you know, you can use your current API platforms to be able to go out and do some of the traditional, whether it's uh, uh, developer, you know, you know, uh, looking at hardcore developers to build certain applications. You can have the Senit Mobile uh, MBIL level and then re really open up for non-developers, where you will see, the, you know, the a lot of the monetization actually would happen on that particular M MBIL layer. Yeah, no, that's a very good point, and you know, one of the things I really like about the uh, uh, sort of the, the sort of enterprise app development environment is creating the sort of the templates the you know if you're a restaurant or if you're a uh, small mom and pop shop it reminds me of um, some of the stuff tom howe's done in his sms based crm just making it so damn simple that you know as a restaurant all i need to do is just you know enable my menu and that's it it's done so it's very simple indeed. So that I think is very powerful and comes back to something that we've been talking about for decades now. You know, back even before SDKs, you know, when you know software integration was a ridiculous task, we always have focused on simplify, simplify, simplify. And you know, with the APIs, I think it's made it it's quite simple now from a techie point of view but it's not simple enough for real people and businesses and i think that's the barrier that senate mobile has broken that's right so so i think that's where we are we are very excited about this new uh, new innovation we, we really feel um you know just uh, very interesting uh, you know stat somebody was telling me about you know uh, you know, a couple of weeks back, uh, you know, they they do a lot of these tools for developers. You know, normal. They said, you know, there's about 10 million developers of all over the world uses these tools that you know, building really hardcore applications. When they saw what we were doing, they said, okay, you're going to get another 10 million non-developers are going to come now and build apps, and these will be not. It will be not not your traditional developers. Maybe they, are, they, are, they will come from design, they will come from photographers, they will come from different disciplines because they have the eye to be able to create something that is valuable for them. They never had the opportunity to be able to really bring that to market. And what Senate Mobile uh, enterprise app creation platform, which we have done, is being able to bring that back now and giving them the power to go and innovate and go and really create the next generation of applications. And these templates that we have come up with us for, like you said, for you know, enterprises, it's for uh, mom and pop shops, it will for, for the you know, medium uh, SME market. But now what we are seeing is not only them, but you're seeing some of the 
you know, others are coming and talking to us, okay, can we build something in this, you know, can we actually come up with some new templates into this area, so which we are really, really excited about, and hopefully in the next year or so, we can actually showcase some of those case studies at that summit, you know, I mean, <laughs> we, are, we are excited about it, because I think the next uh, uh, big thing would be this area, and really, that will, uh, Alan, that will, for me, that will actually really change the way that we have looked at mobilizing enterprise. You know, we talked about it for decades, I think, like you said, you know, we've been talking about it, but I don't think there had been a, a compelling way to bring this to market and send it over what we have done and that's why, and we will be actually showcasing this, uh, some of these new ones also at uh, MWC at, uh, you know, we will actually showcase some of that stuff, you know, new stuff that, that, that is coming out. Cool. So you'll be making the pilgrimage over to Mobile World Congress. Yes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so is there anything? Oh, sorry. So is there? A, you know. So where next? I mean, where do you see sort of um, Ascended Mobile in the next year, two, five years ahead? Right. So I think you know if you really look at what we have done, um, it, it's it's really. Uh, looking at from a, going from a you know from a messaging to service creation we have been able to create that monetize that and and we have to always remember like i said you know what our dna has been always on the simplifying being able to bring what is very you know you know everybody nobody wanted to work with uh, large operators or telcos because you know it was so complex you know so we've been able to kind of a uh, break those barriers and bring those service innovation easier, simpler to the users. So we went from service creation. We also now, then we looked at the whole, whole, whole web RTC and getting that. We went into enterprise. Now a lot of uh, R&D and our focus is going into the IoT area. So, you know, on the IoT side also, we see a very similar kind of things can be done. It's it's a little different, but we are currently we are also working with some of the 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 companies that are really focusing on some of the IoT hardware devices. They are working with us on our platforms and saying bringing that simplicity. Mm -hmm. You know, they already have the hardware, they already have some of the software, but I think you need to be very hardcore developers again to go and build this and connect this and get that. And that's something that we are working and you can see in the next couple of years, we will actually bring some of those into market, you know. I, I can't tell exactly what it is, but we will bring something that will be relevant to the users in the, in the coming years. Cool. No, that's great, Dinesh. I think that, you know, you know it's something that I don't think the market understands yet, the importance of the innovation layer and all the processes around that and how people focused it is. And the fact that what TAP delivers is you know, a, a vast simplification so that it's not, I mean, APIs are there. So you know, those developers that can use them can consume them and create, but there's so much more that can be done to make it as easy as possible for web developers, for non-coders, for business people, with your basic sort of your know, scripting or just some content skills to be able to uh, solve problems in their daily life. That's right. I, I think you, you really summarize it well, I, you know, that, you know, that's where we, we have been working on. And the same innovation, you can think that we will be actually coming out. I think we showcase some of the IoT stuff at uh, uh, TATS, you know, that whole sprinkler system, I, I'm, I'm sure you remember that. So similarly, I think we will have some of that stuff coming up also in, in the next couple of uh, years. Excellent. Okay, Dinesh, that was an excellent session. Thanks so much for taking the time to go into a deeper Q&A on your presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Alan. And uh, look forward to the next next uh, hack and, you know, working with you guys and really bringing some uh, innovation to market with you guys. Thank you. Cool. Thank you so much, Dinesh. Thank you.